Uh, thank you, David. Thank you to your team. I have to say, it's always been a personal ambition of mine to give a talk after an Aardman led animation short film. So, <laughs> thank you for that. I'm so excited to be sharing a concept with you today that I think, if we get right, will change the way that we could potentially diagnose and investigate and intervene in medical conditions. In the overall history of medicine, imaging is a relative newcomer. This is the first x-ray that was performed in the UK. It's of Lord Salisbury's left hand. He was the then Prime Minister, and this was taken in March 1896. But since then, we've come a long way. And we've come a long way backed by British, uh, British science. So Godfrey Hansfield in 1972 worked out if you rotated an x-ray tube around a patient and you took imaging at that time, you had the basis of CT scanning. And he won a Nobel Prize for that. And Paul Lauterbur from the US and Peter Mansfield from Nottingham realized that if you put someone in a magnetic field, you could exploit the physics and the technology, which is the basis of MR imaging. And what a legacy they've left us. This is current state-of-the-art imaging. This is a patient who presents with a bleeding problem who's been through the scanner. We've used the computer to remove the soft tissue imaging, the lungs, the abdominal cavities, and what we're left with is the vascular supply. You can see the main blood vessel as it runs down through the the body, and you can see it split into the legs. And if you look very closely, you can see a little outpouching of one of the arteries that supplies the liver, which is an aneurysm, and the cause of his bleeding. And this is obtained by patient, patient through the scanner with an injection of intravenous contrast media. No more intervention than that. But it comes at a price, and the price is the radiation that's associated with it. And there is no safe dose of radiation. But that's where MRI scores. An MRI is a beautifully simple concept. You put a patient into a, into a very strong magnetic field. All of the hydrogen ions that we have within our body start rotation, rotating in one direction because of the magnetic field. You send in a radio wave, it knocks them out of line. The way they come back into line depends on how they're bound within those tissues. And as they come back into line, they get off a radio wave. But so, so for two million pounds, you get a magnet, a radio wave generator, and an amplifier. And that is it. But it's a beautifully simple concept, and it's safe. But if we think we're the nuclear on the block, there is another newcomer. And that's robotics in medicine. And if you look around, robotics is becoming developed. We think of the large Da Vinci-type operating robots that uh, interact with the patient. We also think of small ro robots that have been introduced. But they have a limitation. And the limitation is they depend on a power supply. And that power supply allows the interaction. But currently, we have to tether that power supply as an umbilical cord. And they are increasing in uses. This is from a publication in the BMJ two weeks ago. A quarter of a million operations worldwide, 2011, performed by robots. So they are developing. But what if? What if you fuse the imaging capabilities in a clinical environment with the world-class robotics laboratory based at the University of Western England? What could you do? Well, I've already said how powerful an MR scanner is. But can you use the MR magnetic field that you use to generate the image to power the robot? And that's where we are. And that's what we're doing. We are building a platform to demonstrate a proof of concept. And I have to tell you, it's going well. And if you do that, then you bring in a whole new number of variables that are exciting to think about. And actually, I don't think it's an overestimation to say the sky is the limit. And what do I mean by that? Well, if you have a model that you can develop, which you can image, you can power, you can steer, and you can decide exactly where it is within the human environment, you can do a whole host of things. First and foremost, you can use it as a source of image in itself. There are parts of the body that we still don't see very clearly with MR examination, which we, if we put a, a re receiver very close to, you'd be able to see. If you could steer, you could get someone to swallow it. You could steer it through the GI tract, and you could place it to, next to organs that are very, very delicate or can't get through very accessibly. And if you did that, you could potentially sample them. So is that a cancer or not? You can undertake that. And taking it further, you could load it with a chemotherapeutic or even a radiotherapeutic agent, which you could steer the robot to a particular place, and you could inject or deliver that very high-density material into that abnormal tumorous area. 
And I think you begin to see that as a concept, this really is the sky's the limit. So in summary, I think this is exciting. I think we are trying to prove this concept. And I think really this would lead to minor intervention, but maximum impact. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>